In this episode, we ask the question, how can a greenhouse use technology to meet the needs of different types of plants? Hey, Josh Bernstein here. I'm on my way to the Smithsonian Gardens. Situated in Suitland, Maryland, these greenhouses contain the plant materials for the Smithsonian Gardens, live butterfly exhibits, and over 8,000 species of orchids. All of the gardens and plants on the mall make up the Smithsonian Gardens Living Museum. I've arranged to meet with horticulturist Sarah Hedin to explore the management of all these plants in a high-tech facility. Hi, hey. Josh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Smithsonian Gardens. Thank you for having me. This is our state-of-the-art greenhouse facility. We opened in 2010. Um, okay. It's auto fully automated, makes things very easy for us, and we're so excited to be here. Can I get a tour? Love to have you. Let's, okay. let's head out. Lead on. Sarah leads me back into greenhouses filled with plant specimens that include orchids, nectar plants, tropical ferns, and palms. These plants are sheltered and grown here before being transported to the 14 different gardens around the National Mall. All the plants here, they're on their way to the museums. Yes, in the summertime, they go out for the entire summer. These plants are to supplement the outdoor garden spaces, so they're travelers. Okay. So a traveler palm is, is literally a traveler palm. It's moving to its space where the public can enjoy it. Depending on how much cold these plants can tolerate, they'll start coming back as early as September. And, and then winter the, here. The winter here. Yeah. And then in the spring, they make their way to the National Mall. They do. These plants are around all of our museums. They're in courtyard spaces. They kind of create kind of a tropical feel that you wouldn't necessarily be able to get just by planting plants in the landscape. Sarah explains that the greenhouses were constructed five years ago and engineered to account for the plants every need using the latest technology, from sunlight and moisture requirements to temperature and air circulation. Air circulation is incredibly important for plants. They like really fresh air. They like moving air. And those air circulation fans also help to move heat around the greenhouse. So you've got a heater in the back and a heater mm -hmm. in the front. Mm -hmm. And those air circulation fans help to distribute the, the heat evenly. How do you adjust the temperature? So we have a temperature control panel. Mm -hmm. And so the heat can come on to make it a little warmer, or the vents can open to cool things down. So the, the temperature of this room is being continuously monitored and compared with the outside temperature? It is. The greenhouses have a sensor which detects the temperature inside the greenhouse and compares it to the outside temperature. Vents open automatically if the temperature inside is too high. Whether it triggers the vents to open, the heat to come on, or the air exchange to change is all based on how you set up your system. And what if it's stormy and if really pounding? Yeah, if it's stormy, we have a weather station that senses the air velocity. If the wind is over 15 miles per hour, it'll automatically close the vents. Or rain will also trigger, once it feels the moisture of the rain droplets on the roof, mm -hmm. it'll close. So it's Based a smart roof. Based on the sensors, roof. it's a smart roof. Flowering and fruiting plants like these hibiscus, kumquats, and gardenias are beautiful, and they smell incredible. That smells so good but they're also incredibly sensitive to light and moisture. Some prefer conditions that are cool and moist, while others prefer it warmer and dry. The greenhouse is designed to suit the needs of all the plants. Tropical plants, you want a relative humidity above 50%. Mm -hmm. So there's a sensor in this greenhouse that will tell you when the relative humidity falls below 50%, voila, the fogging system kicks on and it'll add moisture to the air. Look at that, check that out. So it's again, it's like it's we're fogging. in fogging. <laughs> you can create instant fog whenever you need to. Whenever I need to. How do horticulturists know what each plant needs? Like, how do you know this plant should be here in the mist versus that plant should be over there in the sun? Most of these plants are tropical. They like humidity, they like light. But because these are in a museum environment, we have to reduce the light that they're accustomed to mm -hmm. so they can really survive in that museum environment, which is really low light. Are you continuously evaluating this one needs a little bit more light, you this are. needs a little bit more water, yeah. a little less food? Exactly. And, and then you move them as needed? And that's where you get into the whole microclimate environment. This automated weather system is so precise that the greenhouse can even maintain separate microclimates. As you move back in the greenhouse, that southern exposure is going to be at least 15 degrees warmer than where we are right now. 15 degrees warmer on that side. Because that right, southern right, right, light right. is coming through and it's building that heat. Can I walk down there and just experience that? Let's go. Yeah. As the Smithsonian greenhouse is in the northern hemisphere, the south-facing walls receive more sunlight than the north-facing walls throughout the year. It is warmer. It's significantly warmer. You feel it more in the orchid houses than you yeah. do in here. These are air plants that hang in the top layer of the canopy. So again, they're going to like the strongest light. Yeah. And look at these are cacti. Yeah. 
Cacti love heat. heat and strong light. Okay. So that's why these plants are in the back of the greenhouse. This is the hot end. The hot end. Along with maintaining the proper climatic conditions, technology is used to feed and water the plants through an automated watering hose system. This is our nutrition delivery system called a dosatron. This is the way our plants get fed throughout the year. Okay. We put fertilizer into this tank, and depending on the concentration of the fertilizer, once we turn it on, it just goes right through the water. So, so it's you're a very... basically hose feeding the plants. Correct. The majority of the plants in this facility are hose fed. And how do you regulate, or how do you actually even determine the dosage? Once you know what crop you're growing and what the growth need is, that's when you can decide on your regulated distribution and how much of a percentage that goes into the water. These extraordinary design elements make the Smithsonian Gardens greenhouses some of the most technologically advanced facilities in the country. They're all connected back to a computer system that's the brains of the entire operation. This computer software monitors conditions like temperature and humidity for each greenhouse. Adjustments can be made with the push of a button. It's cost effective because you don't have 10 people running out into each house. You can all do it from one centralized area. What I find fascinating is the engineering behind this, right? Mm -hmm. so, so the problem is how do we manage all of the different needs of these various plants and greenhouses? And you've engineered a system where you have very good control over that. Mm -hmm. Having a system that's automated is, is such a time saver. It's so efficient. It's energy efficient. It's people efficient. I love the elegance and the design of this system. It's really great. Thanks for giving me the tour. Sarah, yeah. I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming. The Smithsonian has designed a greenhouse which solves a number of problems. It maintains different microclimates to suit the needs of different kinds of plants. By automating the control of variables such as temperature, moisture, and feeding, it uses less energy and requires fewer people. This high-tech greenhouse ensures that the millions of visitors to the Smithsonian continue to enjoy beautiful plants, visit the many gardens around SI, and participate in the living museum that is SI Gardens.